Is that equipment check done? Yes, sir. Almost finished. That's a really um intuitive way to do like, oh, hey. We haven't fought the red one of these in a while. That's a really intuitive way of being like, oh, use the call, use the communicator to hear what they're saying. That's really innovative. I like it. It's like outside the box thinking, but it's also kind of neat. Like, I was like, oh, wow, the, the tool that's not actually classified as a tool is what we have to use, which is the call function. It's not an actual tool, but like it might as well be because it's a dungeon gimmick. These enemies would be quite tough with a tab more HP. Another thing about Wild Arms 2 is the difficulty is it's a lot easier than the first game. And, I mean, the first game didn't have, like, hard encounters, but even bosses aren't that tough in this game, at least yet. Maybe it gets harder later in the game, but so far, bosses, bosses look awesome. They have cool designs. But the fights themselves haven't been that hard. I mean, consider this, I haven't even gotten, like, a single game over in this game, or used a Gimmel coin at all. And Wild Arms 1 was, like, the bosses would, like, if you weren't prepared, they would, they would beat you. Like, you, you had to be pre prepared or you'd just get walloped. Like, wallowed in despair, as Luther would say. And the enemy encounters in Wild Arms 1 weren't necessarily hard, but in Wild Arms 2, they feel, like, very easy. <laughs> like, they mostly die in one hit. Which, I mean, I have no problem with easy games. I mean, honestly, my record is, if you're gonna make a game easy, I want the bosses to at least be somewhat challenging. If you want to make random encounters, like, too easy, that's fine. You get a pass in my book. But the bosses aren't really that hard in Wild Arms 2, either. But it's also not to the point of... A voice print verification lock system is set. A block up ahead, access to authorized personnel only. Start voice print verification. Oh, um, it is I, uh... <laughs> oh, don't embarrass me. Voice print mod modification complete. Yeah, okay. Which, you know, I don't necessarily want easy games. I mean, again, if you... I feel like as long as you make the bosses, not necessarily overly hard, like SMT or anything, but... As long as the bosses aren't really a joke, then, like, that, that's about all I can really ask for. I mean, it, it's a turn-based game. If you're gonna make a, a super hard game, I'd rather it be an action game, because turn-based is... At the end of the day, turn-based is somewhat RNG with missing and stuff. I won't comment on the main campaign, but though super bosses are notorious in this game, I'm sure they are. I started doing the super bosses in Wild Arms 1, and they are also notorious. Although the strat is to just use goat dolls all the way through them, which I'm not sure how I feel about, but... I believe you that the super bosses are probably hard, but I mean, they're super bosses. <laughs> that, that's, that, those are super bosses, they're supposed to be hard. Don't get me wrong though, the game being too easy is not a detriment. I'm not really someone who's like, the game is too easy, therefore it sucks. But if I was making a game, I would try and put a little bit of difficulty into it. It's more of like a, what, what do you call it, like a nitpick I guess? Where it's not a big deal. It's just a thought of like, oh hey, I would probably make these bosses a little harder. Oh, apparently goat dolls are nerfed in two. Yeah, dude, I was, uh, I was recording Wild Arms 1. I was doing the super bosses. None of it has hit YouTube yet, by the way. I'm finishing, I'm getting my platinum and then I'm gonna upload everything when it's complete. But, I was recording, I, I recently beat, um, I beat Zed and I beat Boomerang, their super boss forms, and Angle Moa. Angle Moa is... One of the worst super bosses in all of Wild Arms because he just decides sometimes he's gonna spam Seventh Moon and other times he doesn't. So I hate that boss because there's inconsistency in it. But um, at first I was like, dude, these super bosses like blow. But then as soon as I learned that you can switch equipment mid battle and you can just put goat dolls, they're trivial. Like if you just buy a bunch of goat dolls, they're trivial. 
It's either the super bosses are insanely insufferable because they can just like kill you at ridiculous numbers unless unless you um unless you uh, over level or you just make them super trivial that they're a joke because you just go doll through everything so like I don't know. I don't like how reliant on goat dolls the super bosses are in Wild Arms 1 because it just makes them too easy. But also, if you don't use goat dolls, it's like they're nearly impossible. Like, goat dolls are basically necessary. Oh, is someone inside? They're saying something. I must know. They're transmitting. Yeah, okay. Uh, just a few more things. Mop recorder, flashlight, one each, sir. All right, then. Hold on a sec while I start recording. Cool, cool, cool. Super bosses have great designs, though their AI is quite primitive. Oh yeah, designs are pretty good. Especially Boomerang's... Boomerang Flash's design is awesome. Boomerang is my favorite quarter knight in all of Wild Arms 1. He's awesome. Zed's uh, monster form was also pretty cool looking. I like the quarter knights. They're sick. Alright, good work, son. Now you're to help me track down the arm intru arms intruders. Yes, sir. Consider me part of the search team now. Careful, careful. So apparently, they, I, I guess they nerfed, I do, I mean, they nerfed goat dolls. I hope they, uh, I mean, again, they're super bosses. I don't necessarily want them to be easy. But you can make something really challenging and difficult while not making it annoying, and you can still make it fun. For the most part, there have been super bosses I fought that are like, they're hard, but also rewardingly fun to do. And the setups for them, like some FF games with super bosses, not all, but some. Or SMT5, the way it does Shiva, for example. All right. I mean, I'm doing it for Wild Arms 1, so I will absolutely do the super bosses for two. Because I do want to get the platinum trophy in the game. I do have to fight Ragu Ragula. I think I, for Wild Arms 1, I only need two, two trophies left. I need to finish all the golems, and then I need to fight Ragu Ragula. And Ragu Ragula is, like, apparently, like, the super boss. It's worth the super boss of Wild Arms, like, in all the games, apparently. So I gotta fight him, and then I gotta get all the golems, and then I have my platinum. Goodbye. It rocked. I don't even know what Guardian Tim has, but he's getting all these skills. Shiva was a ton of fun to fight. I remember fighting Shiva, and I was very, like, it was tough, and, but it was also fun. Shiva didn't do anything, like, oh, where I was like, I don't want to fight Shiva anymore. Shiva did nothing that was like, oh, this is terrible. And I just don't enjoy it. Like, every time I lost to Shiva, I was like, alright, I gotta, like, edit my strategy or do something different, or I made a really big mistake. So, fighting Shiva was very rewarding. That's, like, the amount of difficulty I like. And I did it on normal mode. It's SMT, though. SMT is known for difficulty. I'm, I'm going back. Now, what wasn't rewarding, but also really difficult, was Time Worm in Dragon Quest XI. I did not enjoy that fight. Because Time Worm would just crit whenever he felt like it, and without seed farming, that fight looked really annoying. <laughs> and I barely made it out unscathed, and that also took me a lot of attempts. Did not like Time Worm. Alright, so I don't go up there yet. Maybe I go this way? Video static. There's nothing valuable in here. Nothing valuable at all. That's 
Stove and Time Worm need to finish the game, but not a priority. Honestly, fair. I mean, the game is great. Time Worm, don't waste your time on. I didn't even need it for a Platinum Trophy. Like, I didn't even... Oh, no, I did. Well, no, you kind of do, but you can bypass the uh, Costume Trophy. Technically, you need to be Time Worm for a trophy, but there's a glitch to get you the Jade Bunny Suit trophy without beating Time Worm. There's a way to bypass it for the Platinum. I did it mostly for the bestiary. And I still regret it, but at least now I never have to do it again. Even as someone who loves Dragon Quest XI, it was not worth it. Time Worm was a waste of my time. But I, I am glad I did it, but also I'm, I'm glad I did it because I never have to do it again. Not because it was fun. I did it just to be like, hey, I did it. Now I never have to touch it again. But it was not fun in the slightest. That is true, Act 3 isn't much... Act 3 is more like a post-game. It's not really much story. I mean, I love Act 3. I like Act 2 for the story more. 3 doesn't really have much story, but I do like... Uh, I do enjoy the, the boss fights in 3. Like, I enjoy the prepping and getting all the ultimate equipment. Personally. But it is very much a gameplay thing. Like, Act 3 is very gameplay focused, so like... I can understand people being like, oh, I don't really want to do Act 3. It's, it's a lot, but also, if you like the game enough, it's fun. I have a status report, sir. Invading arms troops have destroyed several guards, bots, yeah, yada, yada. I'm just going in circles. And also, messing with the camera makes it tricky. Because I, I like, forget my sense of direction. You're going to catch me. Yeah. Oh, Dragon Quest 11 is great. I cannot... Dude, we're gonna be waiting so long for 12. I can't wait, though. Whenever they give us stuff on 12. They're having, like, development issues. I'm interested in that Dragon Quest Monsters game. That could be pretty fun. I mean, it has Sorrow, who's like the main antagonist. Uh, main, ta yeah, I can't talk. Main antagonist of Dragon Quest IV, so that should be interesting. I will be playing that December first, I think it comes out. Or is it second? I know Star Ocean Two comes out either the first or second of November, and the Dragon Quest game comes out on the first or second of December. I get them mixed up by the day, but I know the months they come out. Pretty much boring considering the incursion by arms. I know, it's way too mellow. Did arms really attack? Don't sweat it. Let, let the patrol bots take care of them. Your patrol bots are not doing a very good job. Just saying. I mean, they're catching me, but I'm just killing them. I was actually about to switch Brad, but then I just remembered that, um... I don't have bread. No set date for monsters? Really? I thought it was November. Or not November. I thought it was December. I could have sworn it was December, but maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I'll be playing it when it releases. Because I love Sorrow. Sorrow is like one of the best Dragon Quest designed characters ever. I really have to play Dragon Quest 4 again. I have not played 4 in a really long time. save crystal again this is the save crystal can i actually start running from battles probably come on okay i can't go down here for anything
Okay, let, let me let me see here. Where did I come from? I came from this is the front door, so east. We'll go east first. I'm legit gonna start running from everything. We've been here for so long, and not because it's like long or anything, I just got stuck. Maybe I'm thinking of Star Ocean 2. Star Ocean 2 got announced for November 2nd. I know that much. Maybe I was confusing it with Star Ocean 2, because that's coming out in November. What else am I waiting for? Just that and Dragon Quest, I think. And obviously 7 Rebirth, but like 7 Rebirth doesn't have a day. It just has early 2024 only waiting for those three. And also, I might play Persona 3 Reload. I haven't decided yet. It depends when it releases and, like, what else I'm playing at the time. But maybe I'll... Reload's a possibility. It is December 1st. Okay, so yeah, I'll be playing that December 1st. And that's most likely going to be the last game I play for 2023, like, new release. I mean, it's possible a game could be, like, releasing in September, and if it catches my interest or something, like, a game I don't know about can be like, oh yeah, this game might be kind of fun, but off the top of my head, off the top of my head, Star Ocean 2, November 2nd. Dragon Quest Monster Prince or whatever, December 1st. FF7 Rebirth, early 2024. Maybe Persona 3 Reload. Possibly. Also, the Suicune and Remasters, whenever they decide to do those. Because that's like, that's been a 2023 for so long and who knows when they're coming. That is literally it for me. Did I come from here? No, this is status report. Dude, I'm just going in circles. Someone inside, the transmitting guy. Yeah, I, I just, I heard like all these conversations. Maybe now I have to go to the um, northern thing. do what are we gonna do which print not register with the pertinent patterns use of the block is limited to rank a members special course of this court i'm really confused maybe i need to go back to brad i don't know why i would have to go back to brad but maybe i do Dungeons of all time. 